What is up, world? How are you today? Hello, world. Hello, world. <laughs> this is Kimberly Tracy and Connor Tracy here Hi, from guys. Big Red SEO. And we are doing our weekly recap. We do them on Fridays. Uh, we're bringing it to you as a husband and wife team that runs a website design and internet marketing company. But we have found that this has actually morphed into multiple different things all across the board, which is super cool. Um, we've had people reach out to us to ask us advice, suggestions, feedback. Also got a lot of feedback of letting us know, hey, we're so glad that you're talking about this stuff because one, we've learned stuff. And two, um, it's stuff that they didn't even consider or think of. So you can actually get the old episodes by going underneath Connor's uh, video area. There's actually seven other ones that cover everything. Hey, Todd, how are you? Hello, Todd. They cover everything from business to life, just in theory to productivity to what business owners and freelancers need to worry about or think about or consider. So feel free to reach those out. But uh, today you have some good information regarding stats, don't you? I got lots of stuff. I, <laughs> I got this. I don't know where my piece of paper went. No, yeah, we had uh, paper like weeks and weeks and weeks, and then we just ditched the paper. So he actually has our thing. So what do you want to share with us today? Uh, so I got a handful of different things, a couple of things that are pissing me off, of course. Those are always Those are great. always good. It's been a while um, since you've done a piss off for you. Yeah, I think actually I'm going to have to revise my <laughs> – I've got a, a YouTube channel for me, uh, and I think I'm going to have to revive that just so I can get on and – And just say, and what, rant. say your piece. Yeah. There, yeah. Okay. More, than, more than the Facebook audience. Okay. A anyway, so <laughs> I've got a couple of rant stuff. I've got some stat stuff. Uh, I've got a phone call stuff. Uh Carry you on. name it, it's all happening right now. <laughs> and now the AC's kicked in. So it's cool. cool. Um, all right, so uh, two things anyway. One, we'll, we'll just touch on that real quick. Um, it was a gentleman that is selling, um, he's actually selling SEO. Mm. And he was teaching other people how to do SEO and, and all that stuff. And good for you. I follow, whether it's the experts in the industry or I follow some of the people that are up and coming or some of the people that are just getting into it yeah. so I can get my own ideas and what it is they're doing. And sure. What, like learning from others. Yeah, and, and where they're screwing up. <laughs> uh, and, and learning from others, of course. But uh, this one, one person, anyway, he's launching a whole separate side to his agency. Mm -hmm. He's trying to expand it. Thanks he's, for joining, guys. He's going from uh, basically 50 clients, and he wants to expand that up. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. But the, the method that he's doing instead, instead of having 50 clients at $1,000 a month, he's going the opposite now. He wants to have 10 clients yeah. at 25000 a month. Mm. So it'll be a lot mm. more money. Uh, it's a lot more work. Uh, myself, I don't think he understands that just by, you know, by taking a handful of customers away and increasing your fees, when you do more work, you're not just doubling the amount of work. You're yeah. tripling, quadrupling, you know, whatever the five hex, hex coupling, yeah. maybe, whatever the word yeah. is. Uh, but just by, uh, by getting rid of one client and thinking that you'll just double up the amount of time, you're actually going to end up tripling the time. Right. So unfortunately, I think this is going to hurt him in the long run. But uh, the big thing that, that – the part that pissed me off, and none of that pissed me <laughs> off. Uh, the part that pissed me off was that in his in his attempt to get to this twenty five thousand dollar a month fee, yeah, he is buying a new car. So he's selling his Ford Focus, which he has that he's had yeah. and loves it. Yeah, he's selling that. He's buying a BMW three series, I think it was mm. that he's purchasing. But his theory was that if he's going to ask his customers to invest this twenty-five grand a month, yeah. he has to have his suit, his car, uh, everything has to like be very flashy. I think he said that he like purchased a three thousand dollars yep. suit. We won't, say the, name. Yeah, yeah, we, we won't say, say the name. Yeah, we won't say the name of that. I said BMW already. So. <laughs> but no, so he he bought this expensive suit and everything else. But in you know the way we've run our business, the way mm -hmm. I've, I've run business in the past and whatnot it's not about you know do you have that fancy car or anything else yeah. the first thing that went through my mind with this guy and his uh, buying his bmw and he did mention that he's not buying it to mm -hmm. be flashy and yeah he's not buying it as an ego thing or anything else and that's fine good for you i, I applaud you for doing that um but his thought was that you've got to pull up in this fancy car yeah now, anytime i've worked with a client who's been close to that range they're not usually looking out the window to see what kind of car I pulled up in. You know, they're they're looking, they're busy working. They don't care if I pulled up 
in a Ford, if yeah. I pulled up on a bicycle, they'd probably care about the bike. Well, I, I, I mean, come they, in, might I'd actually, be they might actually so, ask you questions. But I know, know a lot of corporate people that ride bikes and sure. they wear suits and all yeah. that jazz. Yeah. So the roundabout way for you, the part that pisses you off is like, and we see this all the time, so it doesn't matter what business you're in, right? So you have your choice to own these material items, and if they make you happy, awesome. Like, mm -hmm. like our big philosophy in life, just in general, especially as a married couple, is our things don't own us we own them right so like there's a lot of intention of why we buy what we buy and how we have things and where are we see it as um our vote is our dollars so what are we putting our money towards what if we want to splurge like you love cigars and, and don't get me wrong yeah we bought a jeep for you yeah yeah uh, yeah because you really like the jeep right so she yeah. got a jeep yeah i bought an h1 hummer yeah because for I'm, a while that's yeah. the car yeah for a while, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> until the bill wound up being more expensive than the car was but we yeah. like a go around about way the point <laughs> is that we love purchasing things for sure. ourselves but i think the part like the part that kind of like was the pivot for me and i see it happen a lot was in this gentleman's mind he's trying to uh, what's the best way? Fake it till he makes it, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to purchase a vehicle that's like elite vehicle. So when he pushes in the cut or pulls in, the customers would see it and automatically put a dollar sign next to it. Well, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you're driving based on what dollar sign you're charging specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go after, I call them the identity things. Like if it's a fancy car, fancy house, fancy jewelry, those are parts of an identity that you're actually trying to create. We're not opposed to anybody purchasing or owning no. anything the thing is is like if you want to have less clients at a higher end price bracket then figure out how to build that into your business mm -hmm. um, but we've even experienced with raising our rates going through the shift of taking on less clients it is more work so it's not it's not like a oh I I can take you know 20 clients in five hours or I can take five clients in five hours and get the same amount of money you still have to deliver the value and stand behind whatever mm -hmm. you're del or whatever you're providing right so like I we just are we are pet peeve in the place where we have absolutely no tolerance is the somebody trying to get rich quick and or they're selling something and it's falsified so as soon as you pull the curtain back mm -hmm. you see that you basically got shit and with our industry we have a lot of different companies externally that do that that sell that and so I think that's the area of source for you that just kind of like that one at home and was like it was yeah. just it, 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 it in the roundabout way they're giving advice and you can see it all over the internet and all over like different people are trying to get you to purchase their business or buy in. The trend I see it a lot is um, there's these people that are trying to get you to become social media experts, like sign on, become a social media expert and you make this amount of money mm -hmm. and then it just goes down the wayside. So yep. point blank. Of so all it, of it. coming all the way back on it. Yeah. If you were buying that fancy car, for the sole purpose of you wanted to raise your rates and you want your client to see that you're driving this fancy car, therefore that's the justification for why there's a higher rate. Right. You've gone about it all wrong. Yeah. I, I show up to my meetings in jeans and a polo. Yep. This is me and I have no and problem. And we've walked into some big businesses <laughs> with high dress codes and we, we still do t-shirts and jeans or polos and jeans uh -huh. because at the end of the day it is who we are. It's it, like we don't we don't put on the three-piece suit and be like hey here's all the stuff that you're gonna do don't because it's not off. us right and <laughs> I was in the corporate world and I had to dress nice and I had to do all mm -hmm. this stuff and I gotta be honest like I do not miss heels at all. I know a lot of women love to rock them Kudos to you, but I do not miss them at all. Not any, one else. Any business meeting that I can show up and be in shorts and flip flops, yeah. that's the guy I want to do it's business with. It's kind of crazy, too, because we think, yeah. like, as I'm thinking back of all of our projects, usually even those people that own their multi uh, entrepreneurs, they own multiple businesses, mm -hmm. lots of money, they want flip flops and shorts, too. They show up equally the same. So at their day job, they'll be all dressed out into a suit, but they're the happiest when they can walk in and it's just my, like casual. My lawyer. Conversation. The lawyer that I deal with on a regular basis yeah. wears shorts and a t-shirt. And yeah. it, you know, you walk into his office and the first thing we're doing, we're either talking about golf or it's fishing or whatever else. Then the clock starts and I say, all right, it makes sense to develop. We're, <laughs> we're, done, we're done with all of that. Now let, let's, uh, you're on the clock at this point, but yeah. he's always in shorts and always in flip flops yeah. and always with a t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, you know, a buddy of ours on here, uh, he's in the, the real estate business and they have 
a board meeting every week. Yeah. Well, they're in Huntington Beach, Newport. I can't remember which one they're in now. Uh, but their board meeting is that they're gone surfing for the afternoon. So while they have a board meeting, it's not really, you know. You could actually surfing. have some pretty, pretty good, like, business ideas and information when you are external outside, mm -hmm. whether it's vacation. Like, we're huge fans of, like, taking off and going somewhere else in um, just a new environment, a different environment. Sometimes people use uh, stepping away as a vacation to get away from it all. We're huge fans on that as well. But sometimes if you want new marketing ideas or business ideas, even taking a week weekend trip and being mm -hmm. able to recharge the batteries, come back or going on the trip with the idea of how can I rebuild the business? How can I change? How can I structure? Yep. How can I do different stuff? Uh, being in a different environment can open up your eyes to different things. Yeah. For me, my big thing when I was in burnout mode or whatnot, my big thing was going for a drive. And yeah. that drive mm -hmm. could be going for I a half hour drive drives. or I could be gone for 14 hours driving. But that was my therapy. That hey, was Mike, how are you? Driving. Long time no see. That was the, the whole shebang. Yeah. But, uh, that's where I got my better ideas. Now it sucked having to pull off to the side of the road and then write all my notes down and yeah. everything else. Um, Until you got your thing. I got my recorder thing. Yeah, yeah, you got a recorder thing now. But so like the, even that, like I think sometimes people have ideas and they don't record them or they don't write them down or they don't state them. Mm -hmm. So at, like I'm a huge fan of having a notebook around you all the time. And as soon as you have an idea, even if you're an electronic person, like just write the idea down and then you could always come back to it and it'll re-trigger the rest of the information yep. that you had. Like whenever I used to do um, group settings with that stuff, I would be like, just put a dot, dot, dot at the end into the thought and believe it or not when they would come back around you could pick up back where that thought mm -hmm. that dot 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 was and, and even from you know we do article writing and, and content mm -hmm. things like that yeah. so when I'm doing writing you know I might have a subject that I'm writing about and midway through a paragraph you know I have a different idea yeah. oh that triggered something else well enter twice write your paragraph sure. dump that off into a separate notepad yeah I've got a, a Google Doc file with probably 15, 16 different paragraphs or articles that are partially written yeah. that I have yet to come back and, and finish off. But, you know, taking just that little bit, get that idea on paper. Yep. I've got a notepad by the side of the bed. Yep. Uh, I kick the lights on at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> off. Oh, I don't this. get mad. Like, I, I'm over there like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I sleep pretty good. Yeah, it's when my pillow disappears <laughs> and goes over her head. It's like, okay, yeah, the lights are on. Yeah. Sure. No, okay. it's good. I'll, I'll leave the room and continue my thought process. Out there. To continue anyway. the thought process. So, so, hey, I have a question for yeah. you. I actually got asked. So this is a question that happens a lot, but I want Connor. Hey, Jill, how are you? I Hello, want Jill. Connor to answer it out loud from a technical aspect. So a business, so somebody is looking to start a business, but they have a time frame of six months out, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they know kind of roughly what they want their name to be. They know the industry. Maybe they're starting to set stuff up, sure. but they're working a full-time gig and they have a six month time frame to be able to get the ball rolling. Is that six months to start your business and wind down the other company? Yeah, so what I would say is it's six months to ramp up the business and then they want to be able to leave their full-time job within okay. the six-month mark. Does sure. that make sense? Yep. So I'm putting a frame around it for him to answer. So my question for you is what would you recommend from a technical aspect without giving the farm away specifically because I know that that's usually one of your first concerns. Just <laughs> But what, what would you recommend within this? Because here's the reason why I'm asking the question. Let me put it here. I have a lot of people that are looking to start businesses and they have this time frame. But what I'm seeing trend wise is they start the business and they'll be gung ho. And then all of a sudden it drops and they lose faith. I'm going to mm -hmm. say faith. They use faith three months in. So mm -hmm. how, like, what would you recommend so they can build the structure so they can keep going and then at six months transform and go? Sure. You use faith. I use a different F word. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's not the one you're thinking of. It's probably not the one you guys are thinking of. Yeah. But they lose focus. Yeah. Really is, is the big thing. It's still a good um, F word. It's, it's a still a good word. F word. It's probably the biggest downfall for most businesses, yeah. uh, especially when you start dealing with second and third generation businesses. They seem to lose focus. Yeah. It's like, oh, the money's coming in. I'll spend all the money, but you didn't plan for it. As a else. side note, just to so, put a pin into that, so that yeah. remember that part. But I think the multi generational businesses. I think, I think if all of them went to like mindset training, 
they would actually have a better chance of surviving all around. Because I think what happens in family owned businesses is like grandpa ran it one way and his son wants to run it in a different way and the grandson wants to run it a different way. And then so the business is like pulled in and it should morph and, and it should adjust. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that we watch the profit a lot, right? So that's where a lot of these things come from. But I think that at the end of the day, like you still have to, you have to be, you have to adapt enough to the business for any changes that are happening, whether it's environmental or internally. Um, but then you also have to be, if something's working and it still continues to work, don't fucking break it. Right. Right. Yep. So like, that's just my rant right there. I kind of so got amped up. Getting back to focus. That's what <laughs> focus. We were talking yes. About. Yes. So let's it, focus. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're trying to start that business, Thanks for trying, joining to, guys. trying to launch that business and get into the, the, uh, the ability to wind down the other company or yeah. even just reduce the amount of time that you are at your regular yes. business. Yeah. Um, really the big thing is, you know, you, I don't want to say your weekends no longer exist or your nighttime no longer exists, yeah. but if you're not going to put the blood and sweat into it, you're yeah. going to have a hard time ramping that business right. up. And there's a, a hundred different things you can do online that's going to help your business. But uh, the, the first thing, you know, if you go to a bank looking for a loan, the first thing they're going to ask you for is a business plan. Right. Now, I started my first and second and third company without a business plan. Right. And he's a huge gambler. That's one of his <laughs> archetypes. He's big risk, big yeah, risk. Big risk, big reward. Now, thankfully, I didn't have any issues within my companies, but I've seen enough companies over the years that didn't have a business right. plan, didn't have an idea. Yeah. Um, or they, you know, they want to run a business. They know they want to be a business owner, but they don't know what it is they want to sell. Yeah. And that's a problem. If you don't know that, if you don't know what your expenses are going to be, you're going to have issues. So essentially my big thing on it is have that, have that business plan set up, figure out just what's needed. But one of the things and we've talked about it before was, you know, if you're, if your goal is, so let's say you're making five grand a month at your job right? and you need your new business that you're starting up to take care of five grand a month. Well, if you're selling products at five and $10 yeah. a piece, yeah. you're going to have a really tough time getting that five grand range unless you've ramped it up exponentially. Sure. Um, so just being realistic with the numbers, if you have to make it up to five grand a month, let's say even at a hundred dollars, a uh, hundred dollars a product, right. that's 500 products you have to sell divided by 30. That's two and a half products that you've got to sell every single day just to reach the same amount of income that hasn't even covered expenses. Right. It hasn't covered rent. It hasn't covered healthcare. It hasn't covered anything else. Right. So be realistic with what it is you're actually wanting to do. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing, jump both feet in. Yeah. Uh, it's a yeah. sink or swim. It's, it, it, and then that's like that's one of the things that makes us a little bit different. Um, is that in your multiple businesses that you launched and mm -hmm. mine, we did jump with both feet in, right? Yep. So at that point, it's a you're gonna make it. <laughs> I and I refuse to have a plan B, right? So right. it was like I I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna make this successful no matter what. So that came from yeah. there. But what I see happens a lot of times is they people ping pong back and forth. Um, I agree with the focus. I mm -hmm. I agree 100 with the focus, but I also think that you have to have a plan, right? So like if you have, and this is like marketing too. If you have a six month time frame, determine okay within six months I want to go full time. Definitely find out how much do you need to make. Like mm -hmm. a lot. A lot of times when people launch a business and you say how much do you want to make they're like i want to make a million dollars okay well that's <laughs> awesome that you want to make a million dollars but one can your lifestyle handle the amount of work that a million dollars is going to have to produce right mm -hmm. two is your mindset even there where you can manage that consistently and go in front of somebody and actually be able to sell your services enough be confident enough to be able to do that so that those are just the mental aspects well, where i go even if it is a million dollar company if your expenses are nine hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah you made 50 grand <laughs> Right. You may as well have been down at Subway hawking fucking sandwiches. But I, so, I think like at some point though, you have to determine how, how much time do you have? So if you're somebody that's working full time, you have kiddos, you have a family, you have other obligations. All right. Awesome. Are you going to be able to put 10 hours a week towards your business? Are you going to um, dedicate and work all Saturdays on your business? Right. And then from that point, you figure out how much time do you have to find out is the six month time frame even realistic? I think anybody can accomplish anything if they put their 
mind to it. You know, if you want to do a 40 hour work week and then you want to do a 40 hour in this part time gig, cool. Maybe you can take six months and break it down to three months or two months. For, for the way my brain operates, yeah. six months is too long. It, it could be Three too months. long, but here's the deal is like in you, I think from that standpoint, and I would honor and respect that. Right. But I, I think sometimes when people get multiple other things involved, right. So like maybe they have a family that's involved mm -hmm. and they're the main breadwinner, right? Six months might be a little bit more of a comfortable for them to figure out how can we get debts paid? How can we get these different stuff paid? So there's less risk, right? Yeah, but I still think six six months. <laughs> so my this, problem, is what, this is why we're so good together. We agree and disagree. My problem with six months is that it just sounds like a long time. Yeah. And it's not a long time. In the, in the grand scheme of things, six months is not a whole lot of a long time. But in your brain, six months is a half year away. And that's, you know, that's way yeah. down the road. Well, it's going to creep up very quick. My problem is that people will sit back for two, three, even four, mm -hmm. I'm going to say weeks initially, that rolls into several months. And now you realize, oh, I've got to launch my business in yeah. the next two or three months. I, so, yeah, so I see that side of it. And, and if you're focused, you know, again, I understand family. I understand yeah. having to be the breadwinner and all that kind of stuff that goes with that. But if this is your passion mm -hmm. and this is the job that's going to take you out of the world you're in and into a different world, there's got to be some sort of sacrifice. You and, know? Well, and I so. also think that it's important to say the longer the time frame goes, the more doubt and fear can creep in, right? So the bigger yeah. the space can be, right? And so like, I think at that uh, point- and that's part three, right? There. Right. Don't talk to anybody about the ideas. <laughs> so the thing is, is that <laughs> like, you could have that. So like, I almost feel like you have to have your mindset. Like you have to like, Get, put those blinders on that those horse race race horses have those black blinders and you just keep going and yeah so my Achilles heel was for years I would tell people all these things that I was going to build and all these things I was going to do and then slowly but surely they would be like oh, are you sure you can do that or are you sure you want that or their brains could not even comprehend where I was going mm -hmm. and the vision that I had and what business I wanted to have in there for a while hey Maureen thanks for joining there for a while, I actually like fell backwards a little mm -hmm. bit in a lot of doubt and fear. And this was years and years back. Um, sure. And then so I learned like keep, you only tell selected people. And then what happened was I would still tell people. And then this last year, I just, you know, I, I came across you. I always had you, but I came across you. And then I came across another teacher that we, we were working with energy. And they were like, no, you have a selected number. And rarely is it more than three people that you tell the specific things that you're going to build while mm -hmm. you're making manifesting and building but I've got to be honest once I reduce that down like the focus and things happen faster and quicker and I was able to keep focus and keep mindset and keep things going right and, and just yeah. even going on that between myself and Kim we yeah. have different things that we're working on that we haven't told each other right yeah so yeah I've got a project that I'm working on I'm waiting on it on the stage when it gets to the point that it is uh explainable yes and then at that point because his brain, brain your in. brain your brain is very theory and um his brain is like a genius brain like i feel like sometimes you have a brain inside you like albert einstein that's what i feel like sometimes no. <laughs> and for me i'm like more visionary Talk to I'm anybody more like, to know. Feel like, well no like even analytics and research you are there like even sure. code you're there uh, yeah but I yeah so we like there's some stuff that we won't tell each other until right at the brink of the manifestation and mm -hmm. then we're like hey so we want to do this a b and c and usually the other person is like, okay, so what, what's the pros? What's the cons? And then sometimes we come up with the same idea at the same time. So mm -hmm. that's kind of cool to make that big pivot. And only dinner could be that way. I know. You, know, you could figure out what's the dinner <laughs> and I could figure it out at the same time. And then you would just get fed and then somebody would ring the doorbell and boom, it's done. Like that would oh, be that a would perfect be, manifestation. That's a whole next level. The whole next right level. There, so. Like whole, like you just got to think about that. Like what would that feel like? What would that do? So, um, let's see, what were some of the other things? So, um, so yeah. I, I had one from an SEO perspective, business owners. Yeah. Uh, so from that angle, um, reviews. There's a new ranking factor within Google is the review frequency. Yeah. So what that means is how often your business is getting reviewed online. That can actually determine the position and the rank of your business yeah. inside of Google. Uh, Bing, I don't know whether they're doing that yet. Okay. But, um, you know, a couple of months ago, or sorry, a couple of weeks ago, we saw businesses with reviews 
that were anonymous reviews, and all those have been deleted by Google. They're yeah. all gone. They're gone. Uh, so we've actually worked with a company, and and uh, they lost. They lost a lot. Hundred and something reviews. They yeah. lost pretty much overnight, but. The ranking factors now from Google is basically how often a review or how often the business is getting a review. Yeah. And the more engagement there is, the more trust Google puts into that. Yeah. The second part of that is 71% of Americans, and you know, most of our audience here is from the US. Um, but not 70, everybody. Not though. everybody. Yeah, we got a handful here from Ireland right yeah. now. Um, and Germany. Uh, but basically, the uh, I don't even know where I was going anymore. Look at the that. reviews. The reviews, yes. yes. And then them being a removed, and then the frequency of the when frequency, somebody gets a review. Yes. <laughs> Did so, it come back? Th this is why I don't Do have that brain. That talking? Einstein Do you thing. Need going you need on? to just take it. Hi, everybody. How are you today? <laughs> We're waiting for Connor to bring back his thought. Uh, Any pressure? Pressure. Pressure, pressure. Yes. Okay, good. There we go. Don't lose Se it again. No, I know. Shut <laughs> up. Seventy one percent of the business owners, uh, they are uh seventy one percent of customers trust reviews on Google. Right. So the second part of that is that your review is only valid for those 90 days. Oh, Anything outside of that, that's an there's interesting a, time frame. Quite a bit of trust that's kind of yeah. removed out of the factor. Yeah. So the frequency or review frequency, which is the new ranking factor. Sure. So how often you're getting those reviews hey, on your business page and uh, making sure that they're recent. Right. And of course you want them to be positive, but you know, you, you know, you can't I actually, hang, you can't so somebody put online this week to talk about positive. Somebody put it online this week and I was actually pretty impressed. Um, if you do get a negative re review, hey, Brett. if you do get a negative review on Facebook, Google, whatever, 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 mm -hmm. um, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think it's a bad thing. It's how you respond to the negative review that can equal good or bad. Yep. Now, granted, there's a chance that it could take you from five stars to four stars, but if you're five stars across the board, people probably think you're a little too good for yourself, right? Um, not that that's a uh, bad thing. We have five stars. Right, so maybe we need somebody <laughs> to give us a one star. I don't know. So, but the point Brett's is- Brett's gonna is, just disappear <laughs> here in a second. He's like, no, no problem, Connor. I got that one star review right now for you. <laughs> No, the, the whole point is, is it's not necessarily the, the amount of stars, but it's how you respond in, can it be something that can be fixed or not fixed? Um, we do a lot of research and a lot of cleanup for businesses that have ex-employees that wind up ranking their businesses that have no business doing it, or if they wind up having um, just falsified mm -hmm. information. So like maybe their competitors are being naughty and then they go do a review on that company. We do not recommend any of that. Stay away from that. It's not worth it. It's not worth the time. It, it's, it's also a violation energy. of yeah. Google's guidelines. So yeah. if you do have an employee that fills out stuff against you, if you do have a competitor, sure. or if it's a person that you have not done business with, you can submit those as being um, petitioned or yeah. uh, to be reviewed by Google. And uh, they will remove them, especially the employee stuff. And we, we had one of those just right. a couple months ago yeah. that we worked with. And uh, we got another light coming yeah. on here. Um, but yeah, writer, get, writer, guys. get writer, those reviews, writer. get that frequency up there, ask for the reviews. Yeah. You know, McDonald's, you know, geez. I mean, stop saying names. I, I know, I know. But Come on. seriously, everybody who's been <laughs> to McDonald's, it doesn't matter what you order, the next thing out of the person's mouth is going to be, would you like fries with that? It's been ingrained yeah. for the last 40, yeah. 50 years. Mm -hmm. And there's a return rate from doing that. A right. lot of people will say yes and they'll get their their fries or whatever. So ask for your reviews. People won't give it to you unless you ask for yeah. reviews. Yeah. So with that, rate us ah, on Facebook. Only if we've done service for you though. Like you can't just ask, well, like that's so a pet two, for me. Like don't, yes. don't just, don't, nah. Okay, Come on, so nah. there's two angles on that. that, that the way <laughs> I approach it. This is where we agree and disagree. Yeah. Certainly we don't want a review just because there's a review, but we would like a review if I have provided or you have provided right. no information yep. that you can use that yes. is knowledgeable and, and yes. whatever. So if we don't have audit done for you or if we've done coaching calls for you. Or if you've learned anything. We, if you've learned anything from these videos on a specific thing for knowledge like that, like at that point, I'm okay with it. What I'm not okay with with reviews, and I see the shit happen all the time, and this is where I'm gonna get pissed off and fuck like just ramped up. 
don't just have your family members write your reviews for you. Yep. Right? Like people can people can tell. I understand. And don't go to your networking group and have everybody, everybody in your network group like rate review you, five stars. you. Like I I get it. I understand it. But like don't and here's my other thing too is don't script the review. Let them write genuinely what mm -hmm. they would say and what they would do. Yep. Um, it's like one of those things that people, I constantly see people do like fucking, like I'm so ramped up right now. They do these contests and they say, hey, go review us. Like I'm messing up the microphone. That's how ramped up I am. Um, go review us and we'll give you a discount or you'll yep. win this free draw. Anyway, stop, that's stop, a violation. stop doing that because yep. it is a violation. You may not get caught, but trust me, we have ha seen businesses get caught and it is horrible. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to settle down because I'm making so the video Brett, choppy. <laughs> <laughs> Brett had like, asked, um, uh, what about services like Trustpilot or Trustspot? Um, I've not used either of those. There was one that I've worked with a while ago. Yeah. Um, it was something Do they like gather, and I can't remember. gather reviews for people? Yeah. So is you that can, what that is, Brett? Yeah. So basically you use the service, you sign up with them, the users leave the reviews with that company. Oh, That company yeah. then pushes it out to different places. Yeah. Um, the reviews that are left with them, you could then import those reviews directly inside of your site. Okay. Either through an iframe or through We, an RSS we actually feed, have like some like friends that, that so. do different stuff like that. Like we have a massage therapist gal that mm -hmm. her system gathers the reviews. And so I don't think it's the businesses that you're talking about, but something like very, very close to it. Rich my snippets. my yep. only my only issue with any product that you're paying to gather reviews, one, make sure that they are in Google's good graces and mm -hmm. they're following the rules. Um, but two, what happens when you stop using that service? Like that's my only thing on it. Like, is that is it better to utilize a service that kind of speeds up the process and has people do it? If that's sure. your jam, do that. Um, but what happens if that if a customer or a business decides we don't want that anymore, and then all those reviews are gone? Yeah, it's the. Um, it's we the see ownership. that a lot in the automotive industry. Like yep. they'll do those automotive get reviews. It'll plug into their website, but then as soon as they cancel their services, they're done. They're mm -hmm. over. They're gone. The mapping industries are all really pretty much the same kind of thing. Yeah. So it's making sure that you actually own the rights to those reviews. Now, in the case of Google reviews and stuff like that, again, those reviews are owned by Google. Yeah. So this particular company we were working with where they're 150, 180, Thanks for joining, those guys. reviews just disappeared. They were lucky in that they had done an export of all their reviews. They had actually yeah. pulled a copy. They can now use some of those reviews. In the website. In, within the website, within marketing materials, stuff like that. And yeah. maybe, you know, if they're lucky, maybe they remember who those customers were and they can re-ask them, right. hey, can you leave yep. a review, yep. this time not anonymously. So yeah. Yeah. there's a chance that that might kick in there for them. But we do an export. I've got an export of all the reviews that we get. Whether yeah. it's, you know, <laughs> but Facebook, do you remember Google, why Yelp? we started that, though? We started that because our reviews were going down and we couldn't figure it out. And it was because people were actually doing social media detox. So when people close down their accounts or delete their accounts, your reviews disappear. So we were yep. like, where are these going? And all of our friends that we did business with, like they were the ones leaving Facebook and or not, social media. Not even just that, <laughs> but uh, if you leave a review under Facebook and your profile is set to private, yep. that review can will disappear or will right. not show. Because only certain so, people, like, so you, if it's private for friends of friends, they'll see the review, but the public right. won't see the review. Right. Yeah. Well, I just know that the instance where I was at, we were going through reviews <laughs> and the next I saw reviews disappearing and I knew that the people were still there. So I reached out and I found out that they had actually set their profiles to private. And this was during the election. And guess what? There's <laughs> Trump again. Oh okay. gosh, two episodes <laughs> where the name was said. So, but basically uh, they were tired of seeing all the stuff in their profile. They set it all to private. And then their reviews that were on those business pages had all basically locked up and, yeah. and disappeared. So check the reviews, get your exports, make sure you got a copy. Uh, there are a handful of services out there, like Brett mentioned, uh, with regards to I get uh, Trustpilot and Trustspot. Hey, Vicky. Um, hello, Vicky. Hope you're doing good. Uh, I'm surprised you're on Facebook and not fishing. What's that about? Maybe it rained. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so get your reviews, check the reviews, make sure you've got exports just in case the place 
shuts down overnight yeah. and you're screwed. Uh, there are services that'll do it. They'll actually send out postcards. You can tie in your e-commerce system directly mm -hmm. into there. Yep. They'll do all the reminders and follow-ups and stuff like that. So there are a handful of good ones out there. I personally don't use them. Um, I like, you know, when we work with a, yeah. a customer and whatnot, we do the handwritten notes and it, doing Here's that, the deal is I think like if you're offering services for businesses though, ask the customer what they prefer. Mm -hmm. Some businesses are cool and plan on spending it and willing to pay it for years and years and years, right? Um, other ones like they might want to manually do it or that might become your best practice causing a little bit of choppiness, sorry. Um, so I think it just depends on what, what works for you. Some people just don't have the time, they want somebody else to do it. Yep. Um, bear with us if the video is a little choppy guys. The so you just kicked on. I think so that's the cue for. No, wait, I have one more thing to say. I got no, one more thing okay. to say. Right. So, um, okay, so last episode we were talking about content creation and blog. And so I got a couple different questions from industry specifically for event planning as well as photographers. So previously in the last video, we were talking about start with your frequently asked questions, if that makes sense. Sorry, guys, it looks like it's super choppy. Um, so the volume, I'm going to try and do the volume clear. So uh, we talked about frequently ask questions as well as keeping in mind the people that you don't want to work with and how can you transform that information to attract the people that you do want to work with so that at the end of the day content helps uh, two different things. It helps the end user and it also helps the search engines, right? So search engines know where to index you and where to put you. If you're a tire company, you're not going to be talking about grocery stores, right? Um, but at the, at the same time, also for the end user, you want to provide value, be able to qualify them and then also provide steps for what what are they looking to accomplish? What's the next steps to be able to convert them in a service? So some businesses might share pricing and contracts and information. Other businesses might choose not to. Another thing to focus on content, and this is specifically for people that offer services that could tap into storytelling. Um, if you're a photographer, an events creator, I can't really think of a multiple other ones, an artist, maybe you're a healer, um, maybe you're a coach, it's capturing and having the permission from your clientele, but capturing the story and the essence of what you're doing for someone, mm -hmm. how you're going about doing it, what was the stuff that you utilize. So for photographers specifically, you can share the information of a photo shoot, the husband and wife, like maybe a newborn kid, like what's their favorite things? Uh, how did you go about setting up the scene? The, the struggles um, of setting up that scene. The struggles or... of setting up the scene. You can determine do you want to be a mentor to other photographers or do you want to kind of keep it more family focused and based? Because the thought process is if you tell a story, say a bride and groom, you tell a story about this photo um, in the wedding and all that jazz, the bride and groom are more than likely going to be so excited about the story, they're going to share that blog article, and mm -hmm. then their family's going to share the blog article, and then it ripples, if that makes sense. So, if, if I can just jump in yeah. with the photographer in particular, and dealing with uh, with the wedding and everything else that happens sure. there. Sure, yeah. As a photographer, don't be afraid to take pictures of other workers, uh, like the floral people yep. or the yep. catering people or whatever. Yeah. Use that information within your blog. Make make sure it's a nice enough picture and it's not them <laughs> dropping crap on the floor or whatever. Right. Uh, but using that within the story of here's how this wedding came together. Here's right. the people. Yep. Here's all the people that worked in the background. Mm -hmm. Get those links. Send those links out to other places. Yeah. So you're going to link to that florist shop. That floral shop is going to read the article, like it, maybe share it yeah. on social media. Yeah. They might put a little thing mm -hmm. on their website and link back to you. So that's going to all help from your marketing end of that. Right. But and it, here's the other thing too, is like not only does it help from the end of marketing, but it also shares the love. So the mm -hmm. whole point of anything in business that you're doing, especially in online marketing, it's less about how can I get the edge and it's more about how can you support a community and how can you offer different tidbits. I mean, I'm not saying that the links are not important, but the other part of is if you're willing to showcase and shine who you're working for, if somebody does come to you, then they can see what floors that you need to work on or work with, what DJ and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So specific within that industry, you would have to determine within your industry what kind of um, different contacts that you could have that you can shine. You might choose to do it on your website. I was a huge fan and still am a huge fan of if I have 
have somebody come to me, usually I have 10 people I can connect them with immediately to start building relationships mm -hmm. for them to grow, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm big on wanting to help other people and how can they um, launch their business or ramp up faster, if that makes sense. Sure. So I think sometimes people forget about the storytelling and other thing too is uh, we talked about this before. We use Grammarly a lot. You could utilize that for grammar check, punctuation, stuff like that. Multiple different layers. There's different products out there similar, but we highly recommend that. But even if you're not a writer, just get into the seat of being a writer. Um, when we started this business, you actually had me do a training course. And the biggest nugget that I got from them was they said, set a timer every single day for 15 minutes and write. And whatever comes up, comes up. And believe it or not, now now, whenever I sit down and I want to write, I can turn it on and turn it off immediately. Um, a lot of people get stuck in that, oh, I don't know if I'll say it right or do it right, and I don't know if it's perfect, and I don't know all these other things. Like, write it, and then, like, one of the suggestions they always had for us is don't draft it within 24 hours of you writing it, because what happens is your mind's going to want to tear it to shreds and tear it apart. Instead, step away, let it sit there, and then you can come back, and then you can, like, grammar check, draft it, and kind of set it up, structure it. Um, so just a couple tidbits with content creation because I had a lot of people come back and be like, Hey, I got more information. I want, I want more details. So, right. yep. but yeah, so that's it for us guys. We hope you have a great weekend. Connor, look, it's 40 minutes and 46 seconds. Whoop, whoop. Thanks so much for joining. Time. If you have any questions or if you have any areas that you want us to provide some guidance, feel free to reach out via email. You can comment inside here, follow us on Facebook. We will actually be back next Friday. So we've committed to do this jam weekly and it's been fun so far. I get to be next to this guy. Oh, by the way, somebody commented last week and wanted me to pet you more. So no, Todd, no, this okay. is me petting him, by the way. I'm petting him. Isn't it great? Right, that's All it. Right. I'm out. That's it. <laughs> have a great weekend, have guys. Oh, oh my God. Right. Kill the program. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining. See you later.